Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Syntegrator. And here we are looking at the Korg Poly 6 and we are going to do a panel recondition on the PCBs. So that means switches, that means knobs, that means encoders, the whole shooting match. Uh, so what we're going to do, that I have here, is the set of uh, PCBs I pulled from my other Poly 6 and I have them laid out so you can basically see what it looks like inside while seeing what it looks like outside. So uh, there's your reference point. And uh, we are looking here at this tack switch. Let's start with the tack switches. There's been a lot of talk about tack switches. Well, I wouldn't say a lot of talk, but there's been a few to and fro emails about tack switches by myself and others on the Cord Poly 6 group, uh, on the Yahoo group. Uh, check it out if you like. Uh, basically just saying what are these parts and uh, what do I need to replace them? Well, basically what you have to do uh, when you want to take one of these tack switches out is you have to basically desolder it from the back side. And uh, that's not necessarily the easiest thing to do if you don't have a vacuum desoldering tool. And I don't mean one of those solder pulse. I mean actually electric powered suction uh, hollow tip and essentially heats up and sucks out the solder while you work. That's the only way to fly with this sort of thing. Anyway, um, you have to desolder not only the switch, which are the four um, pads you see in the middle, but also the LED, you see the LED symbol there? The LED uh, pads have to be desoldered as well. And uh, once you've done that, <clears throat> these guys come out. Here they are right here. I've done my best to lay them out in roughly the same order. Uh, and it's essentially a contained, uh, it's a full, full unit what you get here and this unit comprises of three elements uh, first of which is the actual switch itself which is stuck in the back there an outer clip which comprises of the uh, black body here with the little button component and then there is an LED and of course uh, I, I am not mentioning the little chiclet cap that goes along with it I, I probably should have mentioned that <clears throat> just bring that over here for a second Poly 6. One of my Poly 6 parts bins, I have quite a few now, as you might imagine, having taken apart three Poly 6s. And here's the, one of those chiclet caps. And as you can see from looking at it, it's victimized by that good old UV discoloration that you see on old PCs and that sort of thing. What this is is the bromine in the plastic formulation. They put bromine in there because bromine is a fire retardant. Plastic by itself is quite flammable, so they put the fire retardant in there. And as this ultraviolet light ages, the bromine oxidizes. Uh, the UV gives the gives it energy to oxidize, and the bromine comes out and colors the plastic, discolors it actually. So um, this plastic here, unlike the plastic from the Juno keycaps, is a good candidate for retrobright. So we'll be doing retrobright on this. And uh, yes, if you ask me in the comments what happened to the Juno 106 Retrobrite project, uh, I have a bunch of videos done uh, that didn't work out. And uh, I have solutions for fixing the problems that were caused by the things not working out. Let's just say I have some Juno caps that uh, look awfully white uh, right now. <laughs> and I'll leave it at that. Um, so I'm going to basically complete that other sequence properly uh, with uh, the appropriate cure and uh, all of that. But notwithstanding. Let's get back to this. This is the keycap and the keycap fits on this square piece and then uh, you can take the clip assembly apart from the square piece as you can see from this one here and it's kind of nice because the LEDs are still riding inside so you can actually reassemble it without having changed the LEDs. I am going to change the LEDs and I'll get into that in a second. And here's the actual switch itself. Let's see if I can get close enough so you can have a look. Um, that is the switch. And it's interesting in the respect that it's circular and flat. That's a tack switch, of course. But it has that little circular sort of key element in there. And if we take a look at the back of one of these switches, uh, one of these um, frames, you see it has a little finger for lining up with that hole. And uh, this poses a problem because we've looked at uh, replacement parts and let me tell you what I got. 
I have two sources of replacement parts, the first of which was Analog Renaissance. If you go to the Analog Renaissance website where you can get Juno 106 replacement keycaps, he uh, does have a supply of these. He did at least when I was there a couple of years ago buying uh, some chips from him, some actual voice chips. So I included these in the deal and they weren't cheap. Uh, the exact price I can't tell you uh, per unit, but they weren't cheap. I ordered, I think, you know, uh, enough for two poly sixes, I think was my calculations at the time. Um, but here they are. And the other replacement switches are these Omron switches, which were gotten from Mauser, or Mauser, Mauser, however you, way you want to call it. And uh, I'm going to share with you the part number. We've already talked about it on the Poly6 Yahoo group, so if you're following up from that, you already know what the part number is, but fear not, we'll be talking about that in details. And here is this part, the Omron switch part. Okay, um, let's cut to the chase here. If you are looking for the Omron switch part, you don't know what it is. Here is what it is. Mauser part number. And it's a B3F5000. It's a 12 by 12 millimeter long service light life, long service life Omron tactile and jog switch. Um, originally it was recommended to go with the B3F4000. And when we looked into that, uh, wouldn't you know it, I talked to Murray from Kiwi Technics, who is doing the Kiwi 6 upgrade and mentioned the, this part number, I ran it by him, and he actually said, no, actually, uh, I use a similar part, it's the 5000, it's the long service life. I looked in the catalog, and there it was! So, this is the Mauser part number, and you can probably find, by typing in manufacturer part number B3F5000, you can probably find a comparable one from somewhere else. So, uh, those are the switches. Uh, how do they stack up, literally? I've compared uh, these two don't mind the dog next door. He likes to howl for no reason um, And of course the most obvious thing uh, Well, first of all, I compared them side by each and they actually have the exact same height So these ones are great for their height the amount of height that they will present compared to the original But of course they don't have the little hole um, And uh, that's gonna pose an interesting conundrum uh, This switch I got from analog renaissance actually is taller then um, it presents a taller profile than this one. The switch itself is skinnier, but the actual button shaft is taller, and the cumulative effect is that it actually is a little bit higher up. All right, I got somebody calling me on my iPhone. Tell you what I'm gonna do, I'll be right back. <laughs> 